Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Stash Busters program here at Sparrow Quilt Company. So we got anybody in there yet? Nope. What's that? Cool. Okay. So people are going to start coming around. And you do have this one set up, right? Is it you that splits the camera to this other view? Okay. And where am I about? Mm -hmm. Okay. To here. And then how high up? To the end of the table. And back towards me as well. Okay. What's that? Ah, good morning. Welcome, everybody. How are you all doing? It's Friday, so I'm excited. Not that there really ever is a break. Not that I ever really take a break, but it's always nice to think about the weekend. And our weather is nicer today, so I'm happy about that. Sun is shining. That's a good thing. We got a few in there. Morning, Arkansas. Well, I'm really, really happy to say that we got our uh, houndstooth, almost houndstooth quilt all quilted up, at least this uh, one version with the gray dots. I'm really, really loving it. I really like the design that we chose, the pieces of my heart design. And you can see it really well on the back too. I love that. I love seeing the quilting on the back chose a slightly darker um, bobbin thread than the actual backing. So that really, really does show the uh, quilting on the back there and those pretty, pretty hearts. And of course we quilted that on Valentine's Day. So what better design than hearts, right? Plus the fabrics in here, we got some little Cupid's arrows and um, some of the fabrics had some little hearts on it. It just felt like a really um, full of love kind of fabric line. So I think that that was really appropriate. This fabric line that we used in this quilt is called Yes Please. It was designed by Jennifer Allison for Riley Blake. And we do have those fat quarter bundles on the website if that's something you're interested in. If you have not yet gotten the pattern for almost houndstooth maybe this is your first time joining us or you've just heard about us you're going to visit the website at sparrowquiltco.com and you can click on the banner there and it will take you to a new page you'll insert your email address and we will send you an email with the pattern attached so that you can follow this pattern and uh, that will be free for a couple of more days and then that one will be replaced with our next one that will be starting next week so don't forget to tune in next week just a reminder that Monday is a holiday for us here in Canada. It is family day, and so we will be spending that with the Munchkins. And we will not be here streaming live, but we will be back on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I hope very much that you can join us. And don't worry if you can't catch us live. Uh, these videos just get kind of captured while we are uh, streaming them. And then it's on the Facebook page a little bit later in the day as well. And we also add them to our YouTube channel and we also add them to our website. So if you're on the website at sparrowquiltco.com, then you can just locate the Stash Busters link and you'll be able to go to that page and see the prior uh, quilts that we've done and um, also the prior videos in this series for the Almost Houndstooth quilt. And like I said, if your preference is YouTube, then you can find everything over there as well. And I hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as like us on our Facebook page so that you never miss any of the fun. Because we are constantly um, creating and um, doing fun things around here. So I don't want any of you to miss out on that. Now, over the past couple of months, I have also been working on this little cutie. Isn't that sweet? So this one was made out of a charm pack and um, it was so, so easy. And I shouldn't say so, so easy, but there wasn't, like I didn't have to think or plan because the pattern that I used or these little um, 
cupcake recipe cards that I use, they have the information right on the card. And so then you just layer them onto your charm pack and you just get sewing. And there's a line to follow for the sewing. There's a second line to follow for the cutting. And then before you know it, you can create all these little blocks. So I'm going to start today by showing you how these work because uh, a lot of people haven't even heard of these uh, cupcake recipes. And these are also available in a larger size. I don't have any at the moment, but I've got tons of these little cupcake guys. So the quilt you see here, I'm just going to measure it quickly because remember I told you guys how I got that fruit fly brain? I've measured this four times already this morning and it has fallen right out of my head every time. So I've got 33 and a half inches and I did add um, an extra border and I didn't use the full charm pack. So I could have gone a little bit bigger, but I really wanted to do this particular type of layout with the empty squares. Um, I'm excited at the idea of quilting these. I have no idea what I will put in them, but currently I'm just all excited about that open space and what I could potentially do in there. Plus I love this little piecing, like I love doing um, cute little custom quilting and that type of thing. So hopefully I'll get a chance to quilt that up over the weekend and then I can show you guys, or maybe even Landon will quilt this on the domestic machine and we can do a video on that too. Because this would be really fun using those quilting hoops. Um, we'd get a lot of control. We'd be able to do some fun continuous curves or maybe some nice swirls. I don't know yet, but my mind is um, bound to come up with something. So now I'm going to show you a little bit more, but I'm going to pin this up on the quilt behind me so that you can get a good look at it. Let's see. Yeah. So where's everybody watching from today? It's always fun to know where in the world people are watching from. We've got one viewer who seems to watch from the UK, I think, is it Pam Landon? She's frequently here. And so just a shout out to you in the UK for joining us so uh, faithfully. Come on, Pam. I think that's awesome that you continue to join us. Now, are y'all waiting for the giveaway? Y'all waiting to hear what it is? How many of you have pre-cuts in your stash? Leave me a comment, I wanna know. Are you a collector of charm packs? Do you love jelly rolls? I love them all. Um, I love to buy the full line of fabric because then I know that um, I've got plenty of fabric to make a quilt work. And I also know that it's all gonna go together beautifully because the line was designed to go together. So over the years, I've been a really big fan of Moda for that reason, because they have all these great things that are just literally ready to go. Sorry. Hi, Pam. Thanks for watching again. <laughs> I've hand chosen this one for you today because I just love this. And I've got a couple of them stashed away in my personal cupboard up front along with like a million other little things. But um, this line is called Bloomsbury and it's by Franny and Jane from Moda. And I just, we like to do a fabric flick and show you all the beautiful colors. Hopefully you can see them. Is this screen open, Ella, or is it just the big one? Can they see it? So look at all those beautiful prints. I love that little like tulip looking one on the gray. Just these navies and corals and greens, I think they're so pretty. So are you falling in love with it yet? Oh, look at that color. I would buy all my tops in that color, in that coral. I just love it. And that's not quite a navy, almost like a cobalt blue, but it works in there beautifully as well. Anyways, this is just a beautiful little charm pack, and this is going to be my giveaway today. So one charm pack plus these cupcake recipe squares that I am about to show you how they work. That'll be my giveaway today. So how are you guys gonna enter the giveaway? You're gonna share this video. Now hopefully you already know how to do this, but underneath the video you'll see three links. One is like, one is comment, and one is share. So of course I want you to like this or love it even, and I also want you to share. So you are gonna uh, you know, spread the word and hopefully your other quilty friends can join in and watch what we're up to. Keep me company while I ramble about all the things that I'm stitching up these days. 
So each charm pack is typically 42 um, five inch squares. And then these little guys, it takes 44, which I really like because that gives you two extras for uh, oops. You know, because sometimes we make mistakes. What it takes is one charm pack of prints and then another charm pack, or you can use yardage if you've just got a bunch of neutrals at home that you want to use up. You're just going to cut them into five inch squares and they are just going to pair up with all the prints in your charm pack. So I'll set those aside for now. So maybe we'll do this on this um, side screen here. Can I see that all right? Okay, so I've got my five inch print and I've got my five inch uh, neutral and you want to layer these. I don't even have a pet. I don't even know where that comes from. It's just on here. Okay, so I'm going to layer. I'm going to put my print down first and I'm going to put my white square on top of that. Now when you open up your cupcake recipe, you are going to find that all the little sheets inside um, look like this. And I put it even around the sides and I'm going to pin it in place just to make sure that everything stays lined up nicely. But I don't want to pin anywhere that there is a dashed line. See these lines that are dashed and they've got the little arrows in them? That's where we're going to actually sew. So I don't want any pins to cross those lines if possible. I'm going to put another pin here and just try and hold my uh, layers together. Can you show them the dashed lines? Yes, please do. In fact, this one might be. Oh, okay, we'll keep pinning. Yeah, a better choice. And you can see it's got a little legend on there that tells you the dashed line is the stitching line and the solid line is our cutting line. Uh, and it gives you instructions to, you know, start at the star and um, in particular here, stitch along. And then I just lift my needle, lengthen my thread and then stitch back this way. You could just stitch down the side. It doesn't matter. Rather than breaking your thread or whatever. So like the whole time I was working on this, I kept referring to it as sewing for dummies or quilting for dummies because I literally did not have to think or plan or anything like that. Well, I did a little bit of planning when I got to the actual layout or when I decided how I was going to put my little squares together. But let me show you quickly. I'll just do the sewing and then we'll move on to the next step. My table's feeling a little tall. Any questions there at all yet? We're good. So our recipes, this says it's recipe three. So the one I did was called recipe three. There's four different styles of the uh, recipe cards and um, you can see them there on the website, what their uh, little blocks are gonna look like. They're all along the bottom here. So when you look at the images, you want to look at those little tiny uh, images to see what exactly you're going to be stitching up. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching this now on the dashed line. And if you got any questions, you leave them there in the comments for me and we will try to um, address them as soon as we can. I've got um, my daughter Landon here and she's my producer. She shares the questions with me so that I can uh, so that I can do my uh, work while I talk. Hmm? I am sewing over one, yeah. So I guess the really great thing about this is that I am able to just pull the um, ingredients, my fabrics, out of their charm packs and just layer them up with this paper. And I don't have to do any pre-cutting unless, of course, I don't have my five inch squares. Maybe I'm using out of my stash instead yardage. 
then of course you would have to cut all your five inch squares, but you don't have to cut everything into little tiny pieces, which I think is pretty handy because that's time consuming, right? This allows you to just kind of get sewing and worry about the cutting in a minute. Now this is a product that is uh, put out by Moda and uh, the designer is Miss Rosie's Quilt Company. Her name is Carrie Nelson. Um, she does a lot of really great patterns. You might even be familiar with her. She did all the books that are called Schnibbles and she's done a bunch of patterns that are also Schnibbles. So lots of tiny little piecing, but this part makes it so easy because you can just layer it up and follow the paper. And uh, again, like I said, quilting for dummies. I'm not insinuating that any of you are dummies, but it is just so easy that it could be called that if we wanted to. So yeah, there kind of are. Um, it gives you those initial options. And then once you get the individual little elements, which I'll show you here in a moment, you can arrange them in different ways. Um, can they see from this camera? I'll just lay that there. And you can see that you're gonna get three different options as far as ways to lay it out. I'm gonna grab the one that I'm actually working on so that you can see it. I thought I had number one, but I don't, I have number three. I just got a pile of these in, so that's why I'm so excited about. So this is the one that I'm actually working on now. And so it creates these little half square triangles and these tiny four patches. And then you could arrange them in any of those three ways. All right, so we're almost done the sewing here. The finished quilt that I've created is 33 and a half inches square. I did add a little bit of a border. I had some jelly rolls from this same line at home and I just added a small border of white and then a small, a jelly roll strip around the entire outer edge. And that made it just a little bit bigger. Um, if you wanted to make a good size quilt, you would just make more of these. If you did say four sets of charm packs, you would end up with a quilt that's almost 70 inches square. So already I'm almost done. This first one. And like I said, you get 44 cards. There's 42 charm packs, 42 uh, five inch squares in a charm pack. So you would potentially get um, 42 doubles. Now, is this one still? Okay. So now you can see that I started sewing here and I just followed all those dashed lines and I sewed along here as well. And I'll show you the back side. I wish I had a higher contrast thread so that you could see, but it's just my stitching lines right there on the fabric. Okay. And I have done up. Let's go ahead and cut that one now. I got a whole bunch of them left over from the other one that I did. So now we're just going to cut on the solid lines and I'll show you that part. Is that a good view there, Elle? My ruler and my cutter. So I want to read my instructions. It says to cut this line first. So right up the center, we're going to do that one first. And I would suggest shortening your stitch length. It is going to make your paper easier to remove if your stitches are smaller. Uh, you're perforating that paper. So the closer together the holes are, the easier it's gonna be to remove that paper. So next I'll trim off this other parallel line. And that little bit now is just trash. I'm going to bring my garbage can closer. Because 
there's going to be some stuff to toss. And then next I will turn it sideways like this. Well, <laughs> thank you, Kathy. That is a good idea. <laughs> And I'm just going to keep cutting across. Did any of you fess up as to how many pre-cuts you've got in your stash? I'm, I've lost track of how many I've got. So many, so many charm packs and those mini charms and the jelly rolls. My real weakness, though, is the fat quarter bundles. It is actually just a regular paper. Like, it is thinner than printer paper, but it's not as light as tissue paper. So now I also need to cut up the center of each of these guys. I'm going to try and line them up so I can do them all in one shot. And these are little. These are itty bitty. Stay. Did you clarify what a charm pack is and that these are cupcake patterns? You got it. So a charm pack is a collection of five inch squares that is usually a full line of fabric. Um, this is a charm pack here, and it has got 42 squares in it, and they are all from one line of fabric. Now, people were calling these um, nickels or charms long before um, Moda kind of came up with the whole plan of charm squares. So you may have seen books called nickel quilts or something like that, and that just means like it's made out of a five inch square. Um, you can make your own charm packs out of your own stash. I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy yourself a bunch of charm squares. You could literally just make your stash into five inch squares and it's so easy to do that. You would just cut five inch strips out of your stash and then you would subcut those into five inch squares. And before you know it, you are going to have 42 squares like that. It takes no time at all to cut that yardage into charm packs. All right. So those are going to become the little four patches. And now I'm going to cut out the half square triangles. And you all know how I love my half square triangles. <clears throat> I seem to squeeze them into every quilt. Yes, that would be good, the rotating cutting mat. You want to stay lined up and not get all wonky. But like I said, this just makes it brainless. Like I don't even have to think. I just have to follow instructions. And some days that's hard too. But um, it worked really well for this little project. Separate these ones. And this one here. My rotary cutter is the, um, the Martelli ergonomic cutter. And you can find those on the website at sparrowquiltco.com. I better do those one at a time just to be safe. So these are my last two cuts to separate my half square triangles. And if you are just joining us, we are, um, I'm just showing how I made this little cutie of a quilt that's behind me here using the uh, cupcake recipes which are just a, um, a pattern in a, in a block of paper. It's kind of uh, really handy. You can just lay them on, stack them up on top of each other. And you don't have to do any pre-cutting. You just use your charm packs and these little recipe cards. And before you know it, you have a little quilt. Oh, can you share more than once? You certainly could. I don't see why not. Give it a try. <laughs> Tell all your friends repeatedly. Hi. So now I am ready to start pulling the paper off. So what I do is I fold it along the seam line and that kind of weakens the paper. You know, when you were a kid and you did lots of stuff with paper and you would just use your fingernails to really crease that paper. That's kind of what I'm doing. And then I put my nail right along the seam and I just rip it. Rip it, rip it, rip it. We're not ripping stitches. We are ripping paper. 
And then the other side of it will just come off, easy as can be. And then we are left with just the fabrics and we can press those open. And of course here I'm using um, a light fabric so I always <coughs> do my best to press towards the darker fabric or the print. And you're just gonna keep on ripping. This is a great activity for in the evening when you're maybe watching the game with hubby and um, you just still wanna feel productive because there's no way in the world that you're binding quilts by hand because I taught you how to bind them by machine. What's that? It's okay, I've got some ready to go over here. We'll set that up in a minute, but thank you. So I'm not gonna bore you to, by continuing to rip off the paper. You get the idea, but we'll scoot these out of the way for a moment. And I'll show you all these ones that I've already made prior to this. So what we're left with after we sew those and remove all the paper is these four little half square triangles and we end up with eight little two patches. My rotary cutter is the 45 millimeter one. Um, I like that size the best. But it is available in a 28 and it is available in a 60. Uh, this one is the one I like the best. Let's see, so I am working on number three. So once I have uh, removed all the paper and pressed these little guys open, I have the option to lay them out in any of these three ways. So just for kicks, let's uh, lay it out and see how each one looks. And I am following this diagram here to start. Now these look a little bit off just because they're not pieced together. Keep in mind that there is seam allowance there, so they would be, um, they would fit once they're all pieced together. Stay, you little wiggly guy. So that's how I chose to do mine. And you can see one there that I've got sewn together. Now, once these are sewn together, you are going to have a block that measures three inches. It's a tiny little guy. So each one of my blocks is actually four of these sewn together. So then my blocks, when they're all sewn together, all four, becomes a five and a half inch block. So they're not huge and it's a lot of piecing, but like I said, it's not a lot of thought or effort. It just comes together nicely. So another way that we can lay these out is by turning these to the inside. And that would create this look here. And then the last one, we would rotate the four patches. Is that right? Like this. So, you know, you have a little bit of option here on how you want to lay out your blocks. So it isn't just entirely cookie cutter. You know, there's a little bit of your thought involved once you get to this point in uh, as far as deciding how you want to put the final blocks together. So we'll get all these little guys out the way. And then you can see once you've got them together, you can arrange them however you like. I did mine like this so that it created a star in my block and then I laid them out so that my chains continued on throughout the quilt. I love a chain quilt. Um, you might see one in the future, but I really do love that look of a chain going through the quilt. And of course I told you already that I really wanted to include those open blocks so that I could have some fun with the quilting and just do something in there with white thread that would really um, show well. So. If that is something you might be interested in, then I want you to share this video because that's our prize today. We're gonna give away a charm pack and the uh, cupcake recipes to go along with it. So you could potentially make a quilt just like mine that you see here. And you could just find something pretty in your stash to go around the outer edge. I uh, used two different colors for my border. I did lay it out originally with just the navy and it was a little, it was done 
it had a nice frame, but then I tried the red and it just added a nice little pop. I didn't have a lot of the red blocks in the quilt, so this brought in a bit more red and uh, really finished it off nicely. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Is there any questions about those cupcake recipes? We do have the cupcake recipe cards on the website and also charm pack. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and check us out at sparrowquiltco.com and you can find more information on that there. Well, that was fun. Wasn't it fun? <laughs> I had fun. I hope you all had fun. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to rearrange things just a little bit and I'm going to start cutting out my strips so that I can bind this big old quilt behind me. So I'm going to need my different ruler. Got my little goodie box on the floor here that holds all my stuff. I don't need two cutters. Put one of those away. Sorry? There are four different kinds currently, and I do believe that there's another set of four coming out. Um, I'm hoping they just keep coming up with patterns because I love them. I think they are just the handiest thing ever. But currently there is four different cupcake recipes um, that you can choose from. One and three here. I'll bring over two and four so you can see these as well. Are any of you quilting while you're hanging out with me today? How about you, Laura? Are you here today? Did you make any good progress on your hound's tooth blocks? Yay! You better be sending me a picture. So this little thing, um, if you made it, you know, like 40 inches square, so it could probably be like a nice little newborn quilt. Um, this would be a good table topper or even just a, a throw over your couch. Just something to bring some color into the room. I did see some ideas in a book on how to arrange them nicely on your wall, maybe in your sewing room and just give yourself some uh, bright, fun color. Can they see these here, Elle? Pardon? 44. 44 papers in each pack. So you've got two extra because a typical charm pack is 42. So just in case you have an oops, you've got a backup plan. And one of my papers in my um, original little pad of paper um, was kind of ripped. So I was able to just throw that one out and not have to worry about it. Um, but here you can see number one. They're all little half square triangles and there's the three different ways you can lay those out. Oh, I like that. This one here, a whole bunch of half square triangles too. This is the one that I have showed you today. And here is yet another one. And so like you can see, there's three different layouts for each one. So that is a good thing, it gives you options. And then, like I said, you can further combine those little intricate blocks to create yet another design. So they're very versatile. If you get creative, you could do all kinds of neat things with them. All right, hopefully you got a good look at those. If not, then please check them out at sparrowquiltco.com. I've got them all there on the website already for you. And I'm just gonna shuffle a few things around to get ready for cutting out this. Ooh, you're going to get there, Terry, and just kick some butt. That is the best idea ever. When you're going to a retreat, I, uh, with my fruit fly brain, I get there and I am Miss Chatty. And um, it's hard to focus and do something like cutting out a quilt. So pre-cutting, I think, is brilliant. Nice job. I had taken my Bargello to a... Um, retreat once. Not a good plan. Not a good plan because I talk so much. 
I got distracted far too frequently. And with the Bargello, it's kind of nice to have a big area to um, put everything out on display to make sure that you're going in the right direction. And I was not going in the right direction, unfortunately. That poor Bargello, it's a miracle it ever got together. It got ripped apart and put back together so many times. So many times. All right, so I'm going to be cutting out some two-inch strips today. So I'm just going to adjust my ruler to the two-inch width. Now, the quilt behind me, almost houndstooth quilt. Hopefully, you've already got the pattern. If you've not downloaded it yet, I want you to do it today or over the weekend because next week we're going to be starting on something new. And so the free pattern will be replaced. So get it now while the opportunity is there. And if you did want a kit just like ours or in the Curiosities line that you watched me piece over the past couple of sessions, you can find those on the website too at sparrowquiltco.com. Now, have you remembered to share the video? Turns out you can share it a couple of times, so go ahead and share that video so that you are entered into the draw to win one of those little uh, cupcake recipes and the charm pack to go with it. Like I said, that fabric line is so pretty. But if that's not your cup of tea, then we can choose something different for you. I know just because I love it doesn't mean that everybody loves it. So let's take this down because we're not talking about it anymore. We're talking about hound's tooth again. Did anybody share about the pre-cuts? Who had the most? Did anybody share about the pre-cuts? How many pre-cuts people have in their stash? Uh, I'll bet you I've got 50 different pre-cuts between charm packs and fat. Yeah, it is. Every once in a while I'll get... Um, I get really ruthless and I will like pull stuff out of my stash and I bring it here into the shop and I've got a shelf that's just Brady's D stash. And uh, right now there's some wool fat quarter bundles, some really pretty Barry J stuff, some nice Riley Blakes, a giant quilt kit that I will probably never in my life make. It's been there for a while. It gets there so that it's there for long enough that I like start to doubt, oh, maybe I should bring that home. Maybe I will make that. And uh, I don't know, that one, it's a Jason Yenter Christmas quilt. It's gorgeous, but I just don't know that I'll ever do it. I bought it when I was in Kamloops visiting Heather and Bill. They are just the best. I love their shop too. I could spend just as much money in their shop as I do in my own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm ready to cut out my strips. Now, how many strips am I going to need for this big quilt. It is 63 inches square. So I need to go 63 times four in order to get the entire uh, outer edge measurements. So two 63s is 126. Two of those, 252. I need 252 continuous inches of binding for this quilt. Now 252, I wanna divide by 40. The width of fabric is 44, but I always factor 40 because it's easy math. In fact, I could just divide by four in theory, and it kind of works. So 252, if we round that up to our nearest divisible by four, we would say 280. So seven strips will get me 280 inches of continuous binding. Is everybody kind of following along with me here? I might end up with a little bit more than 280 inches, but we also have to factor that we're joining all our strips together and we're gonna lose a couple of inches in the joins. And we wanna make sure that we have at least 15 extra inches for our batting or our binding anyways. So the 256 in theory would become 270, 280 will be just right. Like I said, I'm cutting my binding strips two inches wide. A lot of you like a wider binding. And this technique that I've shown you for machine binding, the first time you're doing it, I would suggest going a little bit wider just to ensure that you have got enough to bring it around to the front and be able to stitch down and reach the raw edge of the quilt. Um, so I would maybe, if you're doing it for the first time, go 2.25 or even two and a half 
two and a half will give you a fairly generous binding around on the front side. So if any of your points got cut off, that's a good thing too, because you can kind of hide that a little bit. Who really cares? Really, it's not the end of the world. If your points aren't there, nobody's life is at stake if the points get cut off. Am I right? Yeah. People aren't perfect. Why do we expect quilts to be perfect? I like to do my best, but I'm not going to kill myself trying. I'm not putting my quilts into a quilt show where they're going to be judged. And if I were, then of course my standard of um, work, I would try much, much harder. In fact, I would probably hand stitch that binding in particular, although that just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It's so much faster to do it by machine and it's gonna last a lot longer. All right, so what did I say, seven strips? Seven strips at two inches wide. If you're doing it for the first time, I want you to try 2.25 or two and a half, okay? And this video that I'm doing today, you may not have the best uh, perspective point of view, but I want you to go back and find the video that we did last week where we did like specifically just machine binding and we did close-ups on all the corners and hopefully that will teach you really well and there's a lot less of my rambling it's a bit more to the point it's more precise and uh, detailed okay I have decided to go with the same fabric as the background I was going to go with one of the black prints, but um, this gray dot is just so darn cute. And I just shuffle those out of my way as I go. Binding is different than borders. The question is binding different than borders. So if I had a solid fabric sewn around the whole outer edge, that would be the border. And the binding is the part that seals in the raw edges of the quilt so that we can't see the batting. It just finishes the quilt off entirely. And once you're done the binding, your quilt is complete. I like to pretend I'm done once the quilting is done, but that's not true. It needs a binding. We had a quilter in yesterday and today. Her name is uh, Yelchi. She's from the Netherlands and she came in to visit with Kim Kasky. She's here teaching for the Edmonton Guild this weekend. Next Wednesday, she'll do a presentation with the Edmonton Guild and uh, she had sent a quilt home with Kim last fall from Europe and Kim brought it home and long armed it. And then they worked on the binding together this week when uh, she came to visit from the Netherlands. And I thought that is just really what quilting is about, you know, working together to complete a project. It was so beautiful too. Uh, it was all this um, hand embroidery and some of the details in there were just amazing. Like flower displays and the the embroidery was so detailed it literally stood off the quilt like a quarter of an inch there was so much thread in there and it was beautiful just beautiful i really admire that um dedication and patience to a project i don't have it but um i admire those who can Kim was offering a hand applique project at a local quilt shop here one time, and it was going to be 12, it was block of the month, 12 blocks of hand applique. And I thought, oh, I'd really like to take that because the quilt was beautiful. So then I decided I better try hand applique first and see if I'm actually going to be committed to this project. And I started a single block project. Never finished it. Never finished it. I had it all cut out and prepared for when I went to the hospital to have Kern, who was turning six on Wednesday. No, Tuesday. And like I said, never finished it. Never even got close to finishing it. So, handwork and I are not ever going to be good pals until maybe I retire and I'm like stuck in a chair and can't move or something. 
might be the only point in my life where I have the time to dedicate to that sort of project. So I got three, five, and six. One more to go. So what I'm working on right now is the binding for the quilt you see behind me, which is called Almost Hound's Tooth. And this is kind of your last chance to get that pattern for free. So make sure you visit the website at sparrowquiltco.com and get that downloaded before we switch it out for the next pattern. We can, yeah, you can go, the divisions are an eighth of an inch. So you could cut it as narrow as an eighth of an inch and you can do as wide as six. Um, and like I said, the increment on the eighth of an inch is there. So you could, um, you could cut any increment in between. All right, I'm gonna put this away. Now, we're done with this ruler for a couple of minutes. Now I just wanna bust out my pins. Today I've got a different kind of clover head pin, or not a clover head pin, but a clover pin. They just have um, little circular heads, but the pin itself is so fine, so, so fine. So it just, you know, pokes into your fabric really, really well. I, um, I love fine pins. I'm always talking to you about my fork pins, but these ones too, they're just super fine and thin and sharp. I love sharp pins. And I guess that's why I am a um, pin snob. I love my clover pins because they're so well made. There will not be a uh, video on family day. I'm going to take the day off and uh, hopefully go jump in the snow with my little hoodlums. So I need to be sitting kind of square to my cutting mat for this part. I really like to use the uh, markings on my cutting mat when I'm lining up my strips. Now, when I look at my fabric strips, I always make sure that I'm not pitting um, the same end to the same end. Elle, are we on this smaller camera? Okay. So you can see one selvage edge is fat and one selvage edge is thin. So the one I have laid out already is the thin. So I'm going to bring the wire one over and use it. <laughs> Funny boy over there. Mr. Maddie. So I've got a question for you all. We are in the process of looking for a new shop. We've got to move our store. We've kind of outgrown our current location and our lease is almost up. So we are going to be moving to a new spot. If you could design your dream quilt shop, what would you include? What would you have at your dream quilt shop? I would love to know because as I said, we're moving to a bigger space. So we're going to have more room for fun stuff. And I just really think that quilters um, are a valuable resource for um, what would be great to include. I have got loads of ideas, but just because I like it doesn't mean everybody likes it. So please leave me a comment and share your ideas of what you would include if you were building your dream quilt shop. What would I include? A permanently set up classroom. <laughs> We're just a little bit challenged for space here now that our shipping department is so busy. We can put up our classroom space, but it can't stay permanently because we need those tables back in the shipping area. So once we get to the bigger space, uh, we are going to be able to have room to set up a classroom permanently. So that is number one on my list. And I guess just a really good selection of tools and fun little notions and stuff like that. Yes, good. What's that? Okay, that's fine. And they can see what I'm doing here, all right? Okay, so you can see how I've used the lines on my cutting mat. Uh, the la the the strip that's on the horizontal is lined up here and the strip that's on the vertical is lined up there. I'm going to go ahead and just place a couple pins through on the diagonal 
And when I stitch this, I'll be stitching, well, I'll start here and I'll stitch down to this corner here. And then that will open up and make a continuous strip of binding. I guess the one downside about these fine pins is they bend really easily, so we have to be a little bit careful. Oh, Len, it says she tried to hang a quilt with them yesterday. They are pretty wimpy for that job. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Oh, yes, machine demos. Multiple weights of thread someone is suggesting for a quilt shop. I do like that idea. I mean, I personally get pretty stuck in my ways, and I just use the same things all the time. But that doesn't mean everybody else does, right? So I, I really do appreciate you guys sharing your ideas. Being as I've got this here, I'm just going to go ahead and draw my line now from corner to corner. I usually wing it, but why not show you the proper for the easier way. Okay, so that gives me a direct stitching line. And then once I have sewn on there, I'm just gonna cut out this extra stuff, approximately a quarter of an inch out, and get rid of those um, dog ears or those tails. So now the next strip, or the the second end of this last strip is going to now become my horizontal. And I like to keep them in a neat little pile over here so that I'm not rooting through 280 inches of binding strips in order to find my joins. If I keep them organized over here, then they're ready to go. Like I said, I'm looking for the thicker selvage on my new strip because I've got the thinner selvage on this side. And I do purposely leave those all hanging off just a little bit. Remember when we were doing our math, I factored in for a little bit of extra. So all of this will be cut off and that's okay because I planned to have more binding than I actually need. Is there a reason to not sew So you're saying that you want to sew them together just straight on like that? Okay. There's no reason you cannot do that. The only side effect of that is that your seam allowance is um, bulkier now. When our seam allowance is like this, it's distributed over um, a farther distance. When your seam allowance is like this, all your bulk is right here. And I hope that makes sense. This way your seam allowance would be spread out over a two inch space. This way your seam allowance is all into this much space. So when you're sewing it, it takes up more space. Like we know we have to bring the binding around to the other edge. You'll find that it pulls more in this section because it's so thick on the underside. There's no reason you can't. And in fact, I've done it lots. One time we used five inch strips to join. And if I did those with a miter, I would lose so much fabric. So I had to join everything square, like you were discussing. And it was just a little bit harder. So you would want to cut your binding fatter. You would want to cut your strips at the two and a half if you were going to do that. And then you would have enough room to bring things around to the other side. Ooh, we're talking about lunch already. Where are we ordering from? Brewster's. Oh, um, I need the ravioli from there. I need it. I need the ravioli. They have the best ravioli. It's like a mushroom and cheese ravioli, and there's like cherry tomatoes in it and uh, kale. And, oh, is that a dirty word? Kale. Butter not squash. Yes, that's the one. I saw this meme on Facebook the other day, and it was like a pro tip. Stir coconut oil into your kale while you're stir frying it. It's easier to scrape it into the trash. <laughs> I actually really do like kale, but that one did give me a laugh. <laughs> okay, so we'll draw our little diagonal line here. 
And I know you're wondering, why do I draw those dots? It's so that I can see that I am at the corner. Uh, if I'm able to get in there with a dot, then I know my line will get in there accurately. Uh, and I do want it to be corner to corner so that my um, seam line is straight. Okay, I'll place this in my pile. And now this guy is going to become my new horizontal. And once again, if you're just joining us, this is our Stash Busters series. And Stash Busters is just an effort to help you use up what you already have at home. Most of us have a fabric stash and uh, we own more fabric than our uh, life expectancy could ever be. So why not just get stitching with all the fabrics you already own? Um, and then, you know, you've got less clutter in your home, you've got less clutter in your mind, and you have less guilt because you're actually finishing up your projects. Now, sometimes you may have a great set of fabrics, but you don't have quite the right background. That kind of shopping, in my opinion, is perfectly fine because you're just buying what you need in order to finish a project. That is shopping out of necessity. And we can justify that in any way. You can always find a way to justify it. So, yeah, the Stash Buster series is something that we're doing here at Sparrow Quilt Co. And you can find the prior videos that we've done at our website, sparrowquiltco.com. And there is a Stash, stash Busters page there. So you can uh, see all the prior videos and tutorials and all the products that we're using in our videos as well. If you want to check us out on YouTube, Look for us there. I think we're Sparrow Studios on YouTube still yet. Hopefully we'll be able to change that. So we used to be Sparrow Studios. Now we're Sparrow Quilt Company. So you can check us out on YouTube and be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of the crazy fun. Because we are a little bit crazy up in here. Who else has 10 children? Crazy people. Although I would not have it any other way. We've got four birthdays this month. Today, our Miss Annika is turning 16. So, of course, I asked her the other day, what would you like for your birthday, darling? She said, this car. I'll take this car, Mom. You need a new car. I'll take the minivan. And I just said to her, really, you want a minivan? She's like, I want a minivan. Actually, no, I want a Ford Ranger. <laughs> so, I like... Yeah, yeah, she does. And it would totally suit her because she's just this tiny little thing. So a tiny little truck would totally suit her. But I'm not quite ready to commit to giving that child a vehicle. She is an amazingly responsible young woman, though. That's for sure. Okay, so like you can see, I got these things lined up on the horizontal and on the vertical. And that just helps me make sure that my joins are nice and accurate. So again, just a reminder, make sure you get the pattern this weekend. Next week it will be replaced by something new. And please don't be disappointed on Monday when we're not here. It's family day holiday, so I am going to be busy with my hoodlums. Having a uh, day off, but we'll be back on Wednesday. And we will uh, be streaming live at 10.30 a.m. Okay, I think this is our last join coming up here. Oh, don't sing, Brady. It's not time to sing. All right, last two pins. We got any questions there at all, Elle? There was a good idea. Um, if you have it set up for a classroom, mm -hmm. you have like a girls' day out, make and take day. Cool. I like that idea a lot. So one of the suggestions is to have a uh, classroom in the new shop where you could have like a make and take day where people could come in and just do small projects. We actually did something like that a couple of years ago at the women's show. There is a um, women's show here at one of the um, trade centers. 
and you, um, we had a booth there and we had machines set up and people could come in and make these little zippered pouches and what else did we do? Coffee cup sleeves. That was a lot of fun actually. A really lot of fun. I like that idea a lot. Thank you for that suggestion. Okay, there we go. So that is my last line to sew. And now I can take it over to the machine and stitch these babies up. Hmm, I've had the um, big extension table on my machine lately. I didn't bring it back on for this, but I can sew without it. Today I'm sewing on my little Eversewn 20. I ordered the Eversewn, uh, the Sparrow 30s the other day, so I'm excited about those. We're expecting to receive those about the middle of March. It, um, it's so pretty, it's like rose gold front. It's just right up my alley. We might even get Tylee into sewing with the rose gold machine. Tylee is our second daughter and she is very, very artistic doesn't do a lot of sewing more the graphic designer all right so I'm stitching directly on that marked line that I showed you as I went and again I chain piece these just one after the other And before I know it, I will be done. Now, have you guys shared the video? You want to be entered in the prize to win the charm pack and the little cupcake recipes? Pretty good way to get a quilt. Just simply share a video. Hopefully you got to see our last session where we um, long-armed this quilt behind me here. I showed just how we loaded on the frame and got it all ready for the long-arm quilting. And then Dylan came in and took over the automated portion of it and did it on our um, quilt path, the computerized quilting system. And that's why it looks so perfect because it was done by the computer and then you can just kind of supervise and they usually do two quilts at once up there so he can just kind of look back and forth make sure that everything is going as planned so now i just got this little chain of uh binding strips it's almost like a um you could hang it on the wall you could do it in mixed fabrics it would be pretty So now I'm just going to remove my pins and I really like to use a magnetic pin cushion. I don't know about you. At home I have just a regular little four patch that's made out of fabric and they stick in there pretty good. Um, what's nice about this is if your pins ever spill or something you can just kind of use the magnet and pick them all up in one shot. It's um, surprisingly handy. I've also got this cool prize that I won last year at a quilting retreat my friend Sandra does a lot of retreats locally and one of the prizes um, was this telescope magnet so the end of it is a magnet and it's just on this big long telescoping handle kind of thing like a, a stick but it you know compacts back into just a, a small size stick and so if you've dropped something on the floor, maybe you're not very flexible or you just don't want to get off your butt, you just, you know, expand it and you can use the magnet to pick things up from afar. And I just think it's the smartest thing ever. I just keep myself in my chair and reach things from far away. Now, when I have got a... Um, pile of stuff like this that I need to kind of chain cut sometimes I'll just stack them up and I'll just find the join and just snip them do everything on one side and then flip it over and do the other ones on the other side 
But if you keep all your joints together and organized, then it's not hard to find them all. Like I said, this is 280 inches of binding and it starts to become a bit of a needle in a haystack when you're dealing with that much length. And everything we can do to make ourselves more efficient, it's not a bad thing. All right, so now I need my ruler back again and I'm gonna trim all of these extra edges off. Reach down into my goodie box. Now you could wing this, you could do it with scissors. Um, I usually like to use a ruler. I've had times where I didn't cut well and I cut into my stitches and then I had to restitch it again and it just seems like a waste of time. So I like to use the ruler and then I know I'm staying on track. We also need a cutter. There we go. And those, I don't bother keeping those. They're just too small. I don't have the patience for that. Although there are some people who just amaze me and they keep all these little scraps and they make beautiful things out of them. All right. So just keep making our way through the pile and trimming off all these little dog ears. Our friend that was here from the Netherlands this morning, she was telling me that she also does Facebook Lives from her quilt shop. But I imagine that she speaks her native language rather than English, so I'm not sure how much I would learn. But I wonder if you could add captions to it or something in another language and tune in. She does, like I said, she does a lot of this beautiful embroidery by hand and even a little bit of um, coloring with pencil crayons and stuff. Quite lovely. Okay, I think this is our last one and then we can start pressing this. We're doing okay for questions, Landon? Okay. So now I just gotta rearrange a little bit. Bear with me while I move some stuff around. Hopefully I can avoid spilling stuff. Cause that's my specialty. I'm going to bring out the big pressing pad for today because binding requires a bit more space. It's just one of the great features of this table that I'm using is that I can also bring in my pressing pad, which comes with it. And then we need our iron plugged in. Oh, there's my little scissors. Geez, I've been missing those for days. All right, let's get that off the cutting mat. Okay. So I think I'm going to adjust the height of my table so that I can sit and press. Why not, right? Let's go a little bit lower. For those of you that have not seen my table before, this is the uh, Elite Workstation table and it raises and lowers with an electric lift. I can also tip the table to one side or the other. Today I'm just going to keep it level. Make sure there's nothing underneath it hindering my movement. That's good. Lock those 
knobs into place to make sure that it stays secure. There we go. All right. Are you guys ready yet? I'm just kidding. So, of course, now I need my little sashers. These are just my handy little binding tool. And it helps me with folding the strips as I go. Because I've cut mine quite narrow at two inches, I'm going to use the one and an eighth inch sasher. But those do come in different sizes. So how to begin with that, I'm going to fold that in half like I normally would do my binding. And it has got two little slots in it. So we're going to go in one slot and out the next. And then we will be able to quickly fold and press this 280 inches worth of binding. Now, those of you who have been watching for any amount of time, I'm sure you're not surprised that I went with these gray dots. I'm sure you've heard my love of gray dot or dots, period. If I could have used a red dot, I would have. But there's no red in this quilt whatsoever. Oh, where's my binding baby? I threw her in the box and I need her. Today I'm using a little pinky, blondie pinky, and so I'm just going to thread my binding into, she's got a little split up the center, and I just thread that in there, and I can start winding my binding right on to her like she's a spool. Now these are awesome for keeping any sort of long trim or lace or binding. If you're the type of person that gets your binding ready ahead of time, then store them on a binding baby. It just keeps them neat and tidy and organized. The best part of owning a quilt shop. Um, you know, for a long time, we weren't actually a quilt shop. We were just a long arm rental program. And I don't mean just we were a wrong long arm rental program. And I love, love, love helping quilters finish their quilts. It has been amazing to me how someone can walk in the door for their first time and they always bring a quilt that they no longer love. Somehow in the process of making it, they have fallen out of love with this quilt. And um, they walk in the door and they'd be like, I'm just going to quilt this ugly old thing today. I don't love it. It's okay if I make mistakes. I just don't care about this quilt. And by the time they leave, they have absolutely fallen back in love with that quilt. And I love watching that process. That is absolutely one of my very favorite things. Um, I really enjoy hearing back from customers who have made one of our patterns. Um, I just, I, especially if they're like a beginner or like an early quilter, there's just something, I'm just so proud of them. And I, it makes me feel like a mom, <laughs> just being proud of her kids in a way. So I really enjoy that. Um, I, I, I guess I, I like the friendship of it because you really do create a good, uh, relationship with your customers when you're helping them through choosing fabrics and helping them choose the threads and the designs and that sort of thing. But on top of all of that, I, I love fabric addiction on a much greater scale because now I'm not just ordering a fat quarter bundle. I'm ordering the whole darn line and on, you know, 10 meter bolts. So it's a much bigger obligation financially, but it's just so fun to stock your shelves with all these beautiful things and just make a beautiful shop um, where people come and, and enjoy themselves and um, where they have fun picking out stuff for their next project. It's, it's been a really fun ride. So uh, I hope that answers your question a little bit. Turned into a bit of an essay there. So these little sashers are just so handy. It just makes this process much easier. It's a lot less fiddly when you've got this little sasher because it just folds everything 
along the whole way as you go. Now that I'm at a join, um, can they see from this camera? So we talked about the benefit of piecing on an angle versus piecing square. And you can see here how the seam allowance is spread out over that uh, two inch space versus a seam allowance that would all be right here, both layers of it. So you can see how it distributes that uh, bulk over a two inch period versus all that bulk being in like a half inch space. But again, like I said, there's no reason you cannot do it that way. If that is all your fabric will allow for, go for it. You have my permission. It's your fabric, it's your quilt. You paid for it, do what you want with it. All right, my little binding baby's getting all loaded up here. Now, this is probably one of your last chances to share the video. We got about 11 minutes left. We're gonna go until noon my time. And please don't forget we won't be here Monday. Okay, don't be sad though, I'll see you on Wednesday. We'll be back at 10.30 Wednesday morning with something new and shiny. And again, remember to get your hound's tooth pattern if you do not have it yet, because it will be replaced next week. I want to make sure that I roll it on here fairly evenly so that it doesn't get all too thick in one spot. Although I guess it really wouldn't matter, would it? She would still hold it on there just fine. So I'm at another join and I always press these open, but because it's folded over on itself, it'll be secure. All right, let's keep going. Does anybody have any fun plans for the weekend with family day coming up? I know not all of you are in Canada. I know this is not an American holiday or anywhere else in the world, but those of you who are watching from Canada, are you doing anything fun over the weekend? I'm hoping the weather stays nice so I can do something fun with the kids. There's a little uh, ice skating rink just a block up from the house and they have been very eager to go over there and do some skating. It's been so cold that we've not had much opportunity to get over there. I'm sure the kids would be sturdy. I'm a super wimp though. Do not do well in the cold. I'm not sure how I ended up in this part of the world because I'm certain that I was meant to live in a tropical climate. It's always nice to have an extra day at home with the family. Landon's got big plans. She's moving this weekend. Into a little house with a nice yard for the puppy dog. That'll be so nice for Indy to have that yard, hey? She's got the cutest little dog. She used to come to the shop. Probably some of you have met little Indy here at the shop. But she started getting a little barky. So we had to put it to the studio. Not to the puppy. To the puppy coming to the studio. <laughs> she is fine. Although she recently had surgery. How much do we charge for the sashers? Mm -hmm. So these little sashers uh, for these two sizes is $24 Canadian. Um, and then there's another set that comes with more sizes. I can't remember off the top of my head how much that one is. 
but these are actually um, originally invented for quilting as you go. And um, she is a lady out of Australia, Pauline Rogers, and she does a lot of quilting as you go. And yes, I do have that on my radar, guys. We'll get to some tutorials on quilting as you go someday. I have not done much of that. So I got to work on my technique before I start teaching y'all. Len. She is a Pomeranian. Lennon's dog, Indy, is a Pomeranian Boston Terrier French Bulldog. And she is so cute. She's got these big old eyes. And as soon as she sees her toys, her eye like almost pops out of her head. I've never seen a dog that can jump so high. The kids will like stand on the couch and hold the uh, ball as high as they can. And that dog just seems to be able to jump like six feet in the air. It's amazing. How much is the binding baby? $29.99, I think. Pardon? Okay. They'll put a link there for you. Uh, the binding baby is $29.99. She comes in different colors. Um, red with white dots, pink with white dots. There is kind of a turquoise blue, uh, spring green, and they've all got dots course couldn't have it any other way dots are life there's another join okay well miss l do you want to choose a winner for us please Choose a winner who is going to get the Bloomsbury Charm Pack and one of the cupcake um, recipe mixes. Those are the little paper patterns that allow you to make these little blocks that I showed you earlier. If you missed that, then just wait till the video is over. You can watch it again. And um, I show you how I quickly and easily made all these little blocks with very little thought or planning which, in my opinion, is a very good thing <laughs> when you're a fruit fly like Brady. It's good to keep it easy and simple. Oh, I already pressed that open. Jeez. Okay, and then I'm just going to keep pushing this along. Hopefully I'm not melting anything over here. So don't forget, guys, that we stream live. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Not this Monday, though. Please don't forget it's a holiday here for us in Canada. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with our Stash Busters program. Just an effort to help you use up your stash with some free patterns and tutorials and just fun stuff. Pardon? Bev Moore. Okay. So the winner of our charm pack and cupcake mix recipe is Bev Moore. So Bev, in order for us to get those out to you, I'd like you to please send us a private message here on the Facebook page. Send us your shipping address, your email address, and your phone number. Please don't post that information here on the video because then everybody can see it. Please make sure it's a private message in the Facebook inbox there. Now, I am going to continue binding my quilt. After lunch today, I am going to do the tutorial on the diagonally pieced backing. I know I've been promising you guys for like 10 days, but I promise it's going to happen today. Today is the day. So you can look for that a little bit later and um, learn how I do that. It is pretty slick. And the reason why would I want to diagonally piece a backing um, if you don't have quite enough fabric to do two lengths of uh, backing fabric, you can cut your fabric on the diagonal and you just shift it slightly in order to create more width. So the project in particular that I'm doing this with, we're using Fireside, which is 60 inches wide, and the quilt itself is around 70 inches wide. So I need to make that 60 inch wide fabric in to 75 inch wide fabric. And that is the trick that I'm gonna show you in another video this afternoon. 
I want to thank you all for watching our Stash Buster series today. And I hope that we will see you again next Wednesday. Don't forget that Monday is a holiday. So we'll see you on Wednesday at 1030 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I want to wish you all a great weekend. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.